registered dietitian or something in the process. Yep. And um, you know, had a lot of comparisons that you're well or oh, well aware of to Ted Ginn. That first touchdown of his career kind of looked like Teddy a little bit, I think. Uh, what? Am I, am I crazy? Uh, that's a different story. <laughs> I, I would say. Um, <laughs> I would say, yeah, I'd agree. Because the track background, he was a hurdler in high school. Uh, we had that, uh, that relationship in high school. Uh, track guy, he's a track guy, so we have to talk about that a lot. I think that he provides a lot of that, absolutely. Um, and then if you're operating in that world with a guy like that, uh, you know, I think very highly of, uh, that's a pretty good space to be in. Uh, so if that's the case, I think, uh, you know, sky's the limit. For the well, how's he progressing, seriously? Oh, yeah. I mean, you guys see it. Uh, you know, I think. You, know, you probably talk to Coach Barnes, you can see the impact he's beginning to have on special teams. Uh, that's first and foremost. And then uh, the impact he's having in the receiver room is growing. And uh, you know, I can only kind of go back to previous guys or guys that have kind of journeyed that same path. And you know, and the first guy that's close to me or, or to us right now is Chris Olave and, and where his role was last, this time last year compared to uh, what Jamison's current role is too. So can't speak enough about him. He's working his tail off. and. Uh, uh, he'll be an exciting guy to watch uh, uh, now and in three years to come. Uh, third row right, Rob. Well, how much can one guy on the opponent affect what you do, whether it's a Chase Young, Khalil Mack in the NFL? Do those guys really impact what your unit does? Do you have to run different routes, shorten routes? How does that work? Yeah, I think that you know, anytime you have a very talented player, it can impact uh, you know, the opposing offense or defense. Uh, you know. Our Chase Young example. I mean, our, our clock's going to be sped up a little bit. You know, we understand, uh, especially situationally, whether we have to get the full depth or maybe not quite as much depth, and just maybe have a little more urgency. We always are urgent, but you know, understanding the, the pressures the quarterbacks are under. Uh, you know, the DB also, I mean, probably affects the uh, the quarterback's approach on how maybe he reads the field. So, anytime you have an impact player on the field, uh, there can be uh, uh, you know ripple effects throughout the game plan, uh, but. Uh, in the end, you know, we got to uh, make sure we compete against the highest and we expect the best. And, and uh, so I think that, you know, although they can impact uh, game plans, maybe in, in game play, still got to play football. But it's not just we're going to do what we do no matter what. Yeah, you always hear that, but that's not really accurate. No, I think, I think for uh, uh, overall it is. That is accurate. I just think maybe you would also be smart and put guys in the situation and maybe we help with a lot, you know, the running backs coming out of the back door, maybe he chips on his way out and just gives, you know, so things that are easy on our end to make things more difficult for them, we maybe try to do, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, we feel like there may be a certain DB, maybe we just motion a little bit, get some free access, and now run the same route we're just going to run, but obviously we're going to help our players. Our job as coaches is to get our guys in position to make plays. Uh, to me, I think the players, it's their job to make the play, but it's our job to help them uh, put them in great positions to do so. Uh, front row right, Bill? When the season started, you guys were very optimistic, even though you lost the three that you lost last year, that this would be a very good unit. It's proven to be that way. Why do you think, other than just raw talent, it has been? Why do you think the event has been no drop off? I think, uh, I think that the guys have prepared to get better every week. I think that we've done a really good job with that. I think that where we were in the spring wasn't good enough. And where we are week one, is not going to be, if we're the same week one as we are week 12, it's not going to be good enough. I think understanding that you know, there needs to be growth throughout the weeks and then growth on Saturday is paramount. Uh, I think that we've had some younger guys start to step up too to add more depth. I think overall, the guys have been very unselfish. I think that we, we attained a lot of the things we did positively last year. And then we're also adding some new things because we're kind of a different offense than we were last year. So, you know, I think that, uh, again, it's, it's really on them. They've, they've bought in. They know the importance of blocking, although we continue to get better. They know the importance of route running and the urgency and helping the quarterback. So, like I said, I think that it's really easy to remember how we were week 12 and 14 last year, uh, and that be the image of who we were as a receiving core, and then judge us on week one this year. I think if you were to you know, retrospect, we probably weren't where we wanted to be week one last year either, but then we finished where we needed to be. So as long as we continue to progress, I think uh, you know, we, and we continue to get better. We'll again have hopefully that next that, that same feeling this time next year. Ben, ben Victor is a guy that the whole time he's been here, potential, potential, potential. Is he is he reaching that now? Well, I think anyone that comes to Ohio State has potential, uh, or they wouldn't be here. So uh, I think that Ben Vic obviously has a stature. Maybe some guys don't have. He kind of 
he passes the look test more maybe than others. So they have that, that, that feeling for him. But yeah, he's, he, and you guys see it. I mean, he's, he's being a huge leader in our room. Uh, he's doing a great job on the field. And he'll even tell you he, he could be better. So um, if he truly believes that, we're on the right page. If we think that we've made it and we're, and now we can kind of just do what we've done, that's not, you know, that's not gonna, that's not gonna cut it. So until we continue to continue to grow and do things we haven't done yet, uh, then we'll continue to make those steps. Fourth row left, Andy? Yes, Coach. As these younger players continue to step up and even looking further ahead, you know, with some of the great talent that you recruited, um, what, how deep can the receiver rotation go, do you think, for this team? Or is there a cutoff? You know, it's, it's on them, you know, to me. I think that, you know, in practice, you'd like to put the guys in position to at least get one or two reps in a practice before you can actually do it in the game. Well, we don't have a ton of reps in practice that everyone can get the same amount of reps and get the same looks and get the same feel. So if we can't get that done and we keep making, if we make mistakes, then we can't do that. So really the ownership's on the young men and they've done a phenomenal job with it. So if we're able to, you know, learn from each other, uh, you know, if, if Ben Vick gets the rep at a certain position, does, you know, Garrett Wilson and, and Jameson and, and, uh, and Austin Mack also have that same mental rep, even though physically they didn't do it, because we can't give everybody the reps. So our ability to play that way, both you know psychologically and physically, if we can do that, then more guys can play. Uh, looking ahead, I mean, I kind of only get to Saturday at a time, uh, but you know, I'd like to say that everything that's on the field is earned, and uh, as quickly as it's earned, it can be lost because we're only as good as our last rep, and we're only as good as our last game. And, you know, I think in sports we have amnesia. We, we forget everything that's already just happened. So, uh, which is good. And I think that the guys understand that. And I think that week to week, uh, we're either earning more playing time or reaffirming why we're on the field. It's either one or the other. So uh, uh, I think that we've done a good job with that. Third row left, Dan. You were asked about uh, Jameson Williams. When you have someone like that who's progressing and you have all this talent that's in front of them, how do you balance that in terms of finding a way to get Jameson into the rotation? Uh, I think that uh, it's always the battle, right? I mean, in the end, you, know, you get what you earn. He's earning more opportunities. I think the guys that are also, quote, unquote, in front of him are doing a great job as well. So, um, again, there's only so many snaps. So uh, if we truly buy in to, you know, I have seven snaps, don't care what they look like, and they continue to grow and continue to do more, then we try to get put guys in more position. I think special teams is a great opportunity to make, also make an impact on, on the game. We've seen that. We've done that this year. We've got to continue to do that. Uh, but I think that um, you know, it's a fine line. Like it, it, it's, it, and I remember thinking back to other experiences that you always want to be in the situation where I'm ready to play, but maybe I have a couple guys that, hey, they're, I've done a good job or doing a good job, and, and where do I fit in? You don't really want to be the guy that if I get my chance, I'm not ready. You know, I think we have a lot of guys in our room that are ready to play some football, and they're doing a really good job, and they have to keep progressing. And uh, snap counts will work week to week, and we'll see how that works out. But I'm really happy with how they are handling, as a group, uh, the opportunities that have been given. And Garrett was just named the champion for the first time this past week. What have you thought of his progression from week one to where he is right now? You know, I think Garrett's progression uh, has been really good. I think that, you know, everything stems from mindset. <coughs> everything step, stems from approach. Everyone, And when you have that great approach, you have that great week of practice, it shows up, you know, and I can kind of tell you on Wednesday, you know, who I think may have a great game just by, based on their practice, you know. So uh, I think he's done a great job with that. He's nowhere where it needs to be, uh, both Jameson and other younger guys. But we'll continue to grow there. And again, we have great leadership in that room to where it, guys like KJ Hill and Ben Victor are showing you what it looks like. It's really, you know, sports is an amazing thing. It's really not that difficult to understand how to win. I mean, you just look around and you're surrounded by it, whether it be in college football or NFL football. And if you're be successful as an athlete, just look around. You're probably surrounded by them. If you want to be a great journalist, look around. You probably have some great ones. So if we can just replicate what the, the ones that are having a good job doing and they can replicate that, it's proof in the pudding. So I think that uh, they're seeing that, they're buying in, and it's, it's continuing to improve. Front row right, Austin. Right. And our hopes of Terry still finding their way up into the meeting room for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I think that and even before Terry. you know, So uh, Terry, Paris, Johnny, all those clips have uh, served well. And, uh, and that, that, you know, uh, exchange from year to year from those guys will, will continue to be there uh, until someone currently makes a, a better clip. And that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to replace old clips with new clips. So uh, very clear on what's expected and, and how to do things. His start, I know it doesn't surprise you, but does it add more 
credibility to the guys that are here now? Does it give you more cachet? How does it, are you using it at all, what Terry's doing? I mean, I think that, uh, am I using it at all? <laughs> you know, I think that it, social media is a crazy platform. You know, I don't know how much I need to use it. I think okay. that, you know, if you, if you turn it on, your, so, your, your Twitter, your social media is probably going to hit you in the face, especially if you follow any kind of Ohio State football. So uh, I wouldn't say I'm using it. I would say that uh, it, it, does its, it does its own thing. And, and uh, Terry and I talk probably every couple of days. So, um, you know, maybe miles apart, but not very far removed. So, uh, but he's doing well, you know, obviously. So, you know, all good. Second row right. Tony? Brian, there's been, <coughs> you guys have started six wide receivers basically since 2014. They know that going in, and that's how this works here. How often do you have to maybe talk to you guys about they only were targeted four times this week? Or you know, I think we're we're also right now in probably part of the year where not not always every guy probably playing four quarters, right? So it can kind of feel a certain way, and that's obviously the balance balance of it. You'd like to think that you know culturally, uh, although you know, important, it's not the most important thing. You know, I always tell these guys like. It's okay to get frustrated. Like when guys work their tails off and they, they you know, they you know, blood, sweat, and tears every every day or every, you know, all season long, and, and they don't kind of get out of it what they want out of it. Uh, we have those conversations, but it's okay to be frustrated. What you can't do is allow it to affect your teammates or your team, you know, and, and or your future play. So, you know, get frustrated. It's a lot. It's okay. It's a passionate response. I love. I'm good with that. If you didn't get frustrated, I almost look at you sideways. So. Get frustrated. Don't let it affect your play. Don't let it affect your uh, uh, your teammates in, in the room. You know. So, uh, but overall, it's been good. You know, guys understand where we're at. You know what the vision is, and uh, I think overall the room's uh, pretty healthy. Does that allow much for frustration come from your playing days? Like from you, you went through it yourself. Uh, I think there's some experience there from a relatable standpoint, where conversation-wise. But uh, you know, I guess maybe, and that's my opinion. I think maybe it's a combination, but. I just think to tell a guy not to be frustrated when you put in a lot of work is it's counterintuitive. I mean, you want him to care a lot, but then don't get frustrated. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So, um, you know, I'm good with it. Just make sure it's, you know, using the right energy. Hopefully we have time for just one more question because I want to start to get players up here. Front row left up. So along those lines, I'm not joking with this question. Is it ever possible to have too many good receivers? Uh, one more time. Is it possible when – you have all these young guys that are coming in next, the good young players you have now, you have good veterans now. Can you have too many good receivers because there's a limited amount of playing time? And if you have really good guys who aren't getting a lot of snaps, could that ever be a negative? I don't think it's negative. I think it adds a dynamic. I think that there's a lot of conversations, rightfully so, but you know, I, you know, I guess I never really thought about it. I think uh, you know, we're really focused on the on the here and now and the, and the immediate satisfaction that this culture is, is built on, then it may be. But I think that if we keep in, in sight the long-term goals, not only for the individual, but for the team, then that should be easily uh, handled with grace. I think that, you know, I, again, I, I don't think that you know, having, you know, you want him to be the best doctor. Like, I want to be surrounded by the best doctor, I guess, all the time. I, mean, I don't want to be. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're going in for heart surgery, you just want really good one good doctor, they're like five of them. Okay. So, you know, it, I don't think that there's there's some kind of relatability to the same kind of situation, right? I mean, in the end, you know, if you want to be some of the best, you want to be challenged by the best, you want to be surrounded by the best, you don't want to, like, okay, well, that three's enough. No. I mean, so, I think we all feel that way. I think the receivers we thrive in. The younger guys are helping, you know, when guys are on campus, even recruiting, you know, they're like, you know, he's, he's really good. Let's get him. We, we want him. I want to play alongside him. I want him alongside me. You know, that's the feel in our room. Let's see how good can this room get. And it's not going to come from me. It comes from the players. So uh, if we can keep that and maintain that, I mean, that's probably a, a good piece of, uh, of a pretty good recipe. Great. Brian, thank you very much.